match, without a doubt, it is the most important match of the season in 1991 for Eastern Suburbs and St George. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Nissan Friday Nighter between the Roosters and the Saints, as both these teams now are starting to search for some former days of glory. For Eastern Suburbs, it was back in 1987 when they were last in the big end of season matches. Good evening, Wayne Pearce. They are still within a chance uh, here tonight. Yeah, they are, and their supporters will certainly have their hearts in their mouths tonight because uh, the Roosters really must win this one. If they're to win this match, then they've got to look towards their forwards because they've got a big edge in the forward pack, in my opinion. At fullback, uh, George, Steve Georgialis comes in. He's uh, a rookie at this position, so it'll be interesting to see how he handles it. Prothero, Deacon, Hill, Orford, Paul, Sherlock, and that strong-looking forward pack. Vorton, McGahn, who's captain, Beecraft, Hardy, Marshall, Salvatore, and the coach is Mark Murray. Yeah, well, I was talking about former days of glory. I can hear uh, St George fans asking the same question. Bill Anderson was a grand final and minor premiership back in 85. Uh, they mightn't get the minor premiership, but a chance for the semi still. Yeah, they are. They're sailing along pretty well. They've won three out of their last four, and that narrow loss was to Penrith, so they're not going too badly, are they, of late? They've built that on the back of their back line, Graham, and if you have a look at that back line, it really has got plenty of pace. Potter at fullback. What about those two wingers? The envy of the league, Walford and the fire. The centres, Coyne and Beatty. The halves, Coyne and Hodges. Forwards, they're pretty solid too. Hardy, Goulet, Fullerton Smith, Pickin, Collins and Osborne. And the coach, Brian Smith. Is it enough, Walford and a fire out in the wings? Well, I think it might be. It's almost close enough to pick a draw, but you won't let me do that. So I'm going for St George, and I think it will be on the back of those two former Eastern Suburbs players. The referee tonight on Nissan Friday night is Graham Annesley. hands of the referee he finds Hugh McGann and he signals the first 40 minutes underway Salvatore with a deep kickoff 55 meters on the fly they might think of him as a last chance of a shot at goal if it ever comes to your halfway Bill he'd have no trouble with the distance as long as he steered it straight Potter out of dummy half, 10 metres out from their own line. Osborne takes it on in the forwards. 13 points in the Winfield Cup for both East and St George. And in white is the for and against the 1991. And then last season's figures, 118-4 last year, so they've improved certainly East. And look at the way they've improved in defence. While St George scored the same number of points last year, but their defence in 91 has improved by 63. So two big improvers, 12 months down the track. Thanks to the penalty, St George go down to Eastern Suburbs territory. Deacon was already out over the sideline, so it will still be a tap restart. Pickett, formerly from the Cronulla Club. Hodges to Osborne standing wide. Big man can do some damage out there. He can stand out right amongst the backs and try and get away some supports. So can Goulet. Plenty of height about him, always needing two men to put him down. Hodges, quick switch of play. Getting it out to Walford with a little bit of room near the sideline. They show him that line and put him over it. Potter. Potter back in that fullback position. He's been around in the St. George back line in 91. Fullback is his favourite. Now a fire. Greeted by the Eastern Suburbs forwards. Former teammates, some of them. As it is for Ricky Walford up against his old club East. Peter Coyne. Good ball to brother Mark to give him a chance out wide. Cover defence was there from Borton to put him off. And assistance from Deacon. This has got all the makings of a great game. They are looking to move the ball around. The inside passing is good. And the pace out wide is spectacular. Orford. A kick to an open wing. But there was plenty of defence out there also. Hill. It's interesting. 32 tries from Eastern Suburbs this season. 34 to St George. Amazingly, out of that 34, has been 13 scored by a fire and also Walford. And the fire's only been here four weeks. Salvatore on a very short blind side. And he's learned how to tackle since he was last here. Sherlock with a long ball out to Hall. Likewise to Borton, it was too long. Missed him, but bounced up nicely for Deacon. 
Sherlock. Kicking away from Potter. Down towards the fire's wing. The fire leaves it for the fullback. And Potter faces up to four defenders. Nil all missing Friday night, the Roosters and the Saints. Wayne Collins to Pickin. Eastern Suburbs have won the past five encounters against the Saints. Goulet onto a good short ball. Support from Beanie. A fire's outside now. The kick and chase. Orford in a fire. A fire up gets it down, does he? No. Now the touch judge has ruled no. A fire has booted the ball out into the seats. He can't believe it. Great short ball. St George had plenty of support. The kick was on for Beatty because a fire had a defender between them. The race was on and the bounce was there for a fire. Touch judge was there. He looked to get it down. He didn't touch the post. It was an Eastern Suburbs player. Yeah, that was a try for mine. A fire actually had to pull up. He was do going too fast for Beatty. He couldn't find a, a position for himself. He, he was finding it hard to be able to get the ball. I think he called for the hit kick ahead, but he got that one down. Now, Sherlock with Eastern Suburbs. Hall putting the kick in for Eastern Suburbs. One bounce over the sideline. Now, let's see if we can have a closer look at a fire and just who took this post out. In goal judges there. A fire got it down and he didn't go anywhere near the post. Touch judge was incorrect. Now, it's interesting that we've got in goal judges. And I know a touch judge has to call on the corner post, Bill, but if heads had have got together there, I think we would have had a St George try. I'm sure if the touch judge and the referee had the benefit of what we've got, and that's the replay, it would have been ruled as such. Yeah, but I don't think the question was the, was the corner post. I think it was the actual white line in goal, and uh, it was very close to that. Nil all. The Roosters and the Saints. Dummy from Coin. Beautiful dummy. Ankle tap by Sherlock. It's still on. Beatty again. Beatty to a fire. He loses it. There are some opportunities going missing now, but it's an open match here. It's quite obvious, Graham, that St George are going to attack Eastern Suburbs out wide. That's where they view they have strength, and they're certainly coming up trumps early. Well, it's quite obvious also, Wayne, that there's a man at 5'8 with a little bit of skill, Peter Coyne. Plenty, plenty of uh, talent in the handling department. Everybody missed him with that dummy. Nil all, Eastern St George. And Beecraft to look for the sideline. And Graham, you, you mentioned the interchange. In a game as quick as this one, the astute use of the interchange could help determine the result. It's a quick one. Good kick from Beecraft. He's always picked out as the first receiver from the tap restart so far. He earns his money. Some of those moves. Yeah. Marshall, quickly from dummy half. St George looked to be well and truly offside. Hardy working it towards the sideline. They open up the field now. Very wide Sherlock. Big back line. George Alice. Vorton. McGahn looking for some runners. Pops it back. Right in front of the post, 12 metres out. They've only got one tackle left. The bomb to the end goal from Marshall Potter's there. Good cover from his own teammates. They formed a line in front of him. They gave him plenty of support. The bomb was a good one. Brothero. It's amazing, Graham. I know as a coach that at times you can go out with a game plan and when the opposition starts to move the ball around and they play this open, free-flowing sort of football, you very often get tied up in that environment. It's a snowballing effect and no matter what you've planned to do, you tend to get tied up in that ball movement and follow suit yourself. Well, they got tied up themselves here, Eastern Suburbs. Huey McGahn and Terry Hill, a shepherd. McGahn was looking for the short ball and McGahn ran straight into Goulet. Annesley, no hesitation. Hits it well. The Saints grab the break. 
It's St. George on this at Friday night. 2-0 over East. Brother O. 32 metres out from the East line. McGann. Jarvis wrapped up very quickly. Good defence from Priddle. Nice working this straight across the paddock. They might confuse themselves a little. They've just gone back to where the previous play of the ball was. And the forwards have to race back over there. Marshall. Terry Hill once more. The Roosters have been good on the Nissan Friday nighters. Twice we've had them this year. Two victories. St. George have lost their only one. Sherlock, a little chip from McGann. Well taken. He keeps it alive beautifully. Beecroft, Beecroft with a chance. He's trying to commit the defence. Salvatore, oh, great cover defence. Magnificent skills from both sides. Deserved a try, but then the defence was superb from St. George to get there. It was a great little chip kick from Sherlock and McGann. Look at the way he kept it alive for Beecraft. And look at the pace from this back rower. A one-hander, a la Gene Miles, straight to Salvatore. And Ricky Walford came from the far wing to stop the try. And what a tackle that was by Ricky Walford. It's all well and good to be able to score tries, but ones you can stop are just as important. Now they've got an overlap. Mark Coyne. Coyne looking for support. He gets it away. St. George down the other end. The pass was forward. I don't believe it. It's a good call from Annesley. Now St. George hesitated. They waited too long. Great chasing from Sherlock. It still should have been a try. Yeah, Troy Hodges had made the break here. He pinned his ears back. At that point, he tried to get the ball free. I don't think he could find it, uh, find it in the right position. He finally got it up to Preedle, but that was too late. It's still 2-0 to St. George in a thrilling first half here. So far, the Roosters lose it. Hardy's got it. Action everywhere here at the stadium. St. George with a chance and numbers out wide. Coyne had to hesitate for the ball that was thrown high to him. Under enormous pressure now, the Roosters, five metres out from their own line. Both sides have been saving tries. Hodges, cut out ball, beautifully picked up by Beatty. They've forced him back 11 metres away. Short ball to Pickin, Pickin back to Hodges. He steps and loses it. And the pace will continue. He had already beaten the man with the step. He beat Salvatore. And a despairing hand knocked the ball out. We've seen some desperate efforts to save tries. Ricky Walford's tackle at one end. And then Salvatore flicked a ball loose there to save one at the other end. All you have to do, Bill, is keep on the back of your mind that this match is a vital one for semi-finals. And it's showing. Oh, that, that's the way they're playing. And, and at times, the pressure's telling. Last tackle for the Roosters. Morton, kick and chase for his backs. It will be left to Potter. Potter to run away from George Arliss, he won't. Walford from his wing. That ball looked forward to Beatty. Pickin. Put so much pressure on the dummy half some runners Bill, don't they? They get too far. Yeah, they, they do. That, that ability to hit the advantage line and, and to be comfortable in where you take it, just a little bit wide off the dummy half so you stretch their defence, is an art. Not this time as Collins gets out of there for Hardy. Good bounce to Goulet. Quick hands to Osborne. Osborne! A fire's inside. Good night. skills from Osborne. Martin Afire will go and join them in row A. This is what he gets paid for, Martin Afire. Now here's the lead up on the Nissan replay. On to Jeff Hardy, a much improved footballer since he played with Illawarra. He got the pass back. It wasn't a good one to Goulet, but he was able to keep the ball alive. Now Osborne here, terrific front rower's skills. He drew all, got the bad ball back into Alfia, and when he gets it that close to the try line, it shut the gate.
100 percent for Walford. He keeps it 100 percent. It is the Saints with a handy 8 0 lead over East. A good run, Guy Pickett. He's unfashionable, but he gets the hard yards. And Hardy with some more work. They're looking to get on the outside of them every time, aren't they? They hit a couple of hard ones up the centre and then built the ball out to their to their outside backs that look to beat their man on the uh, on the outside edge. The kick from the Saints, beautifully taken by Georgialis. The Roosters needing to put some points on the board. They've got to make sure they're next. Yeah, Dennis Beecroft in the back, back play there, Graham, uh, down flat on his back. I don't know what the problem is. So Beecroft out of the line. As Vorton goes up the middle strongly. Attack and counter-attack has been the call of the night right from the kickoff. Five handling errors against the Saints. Potter waits for this one to nearly stop. And he beats the tackle of Brandon Hall. So Beecraft coming off, hobbling to the sideline. Now Annesley is going to allow Beecraft plenty of time to get off the field. He's halted play. I think it was more that he was going to interfere with the play. He was in the centre of where the play the ball was. Picking again more work. Seven missed tackles from the Roosters. This and George only the four. Hodges. Lule look to overrun him and the pass look forward. But his play of the ball was slowed down. Now it's Goulet. Plenty of sharp ball movement from the Saints. A lot of speed in their work. Yeah, the handling on the edge of the ruck, Graham, is, is superb. But as you say, the short play um, and hitting the edges of the ruck is, is outstanding. A good solid game from Peter Coyne. This kick was nearly taken from Prothero. He was knocked back. East with a chance now. The ball needed to travel one more pass. They had two and three men left over. Yeah, but the experience of Michael Booty in the centre shut that out. He moved up, and even though they had the numbers east, they couldn't get the ball where they had to. Hill. Big back line again for the Roosters. Borton. Hall. McGann. Men left over. Deacon outside Walford. Getting it back inside for Prothero. Good hands. Salvatore. Pointing to go open. He went the blind to Deacon. Deacon's kick is near the sideline. Potter is there and so is Salvatore. Forty-five out there for East. Jason Tassel. And that's David Truella out there in 22 as well. Tassel with a good hit on Osborne. Pickett. Midfield. Saints looking for a little bit of a breather as East have lifted their game. Osborne not expecting the ball but still gets a good kick away. All the wingers have seen plenty of the ball. Won't disappoint any fans either. East get another penalty. It's the Roosters behind St. George 8 0. Eight points to nil to the Saints. Nesson Friday night from the Sydney Stadium. Salvatore puts this one 40 metres out from the St George line. The thing that East have shown us in, in all of the games we've had this year is their ability to just hang in in a football match, even, if that, even when things aren't going their way. 
and then they can pull something out and stick a try on when you least expect it. They're still right in this. Tassel. Good one-hander back for Marshall. The Roosters looking for the try on reply. Now Hall. Infield Gordon. Gordon's pass was marginal. I thought it was a bit more than that. There's been a few of them in the last five or ten minutes. Gordon staying alive. Chuella, likewise to Hall. Finished off by Goulet. And also Priddle. Salvatore. Salvatore crunches through. Hills on inside him. Try time, the Roosters. They keep on hitting some short lines. And this time it works for Ace. Terry Hill picks up another tricolour try, put it down to Salvatore, missing replay, he got away from Osborne, really stretched out, and he positioned the support beautifully. No one could stop Hill from there, he's come fighting back. Sherlock, 18 goals so far this year. Hooking this one away. But they've got on the board. It is St. George 8, East 4. They've just scored a try to put their mark on the match. Now they've got to defend Grimley. Coyne. Always carries that ball out in front of him and makes the defence think. I like the look of him. He keeps the ball available. He's got good footwork and a good sense of when to pass and when not to. Elliott with his first touch. Ten metres out from the Roosters line. Collins. Knocked down by East and knocked towards Salvatore. From defence, they get a chance out wide. Good smart play from East. McGarn looking for some work to make up for the, his own error from the kickoff. Marshall. Good play from the Roosters to come back to halfway. Yeah, St George's mark of defence isn't what it might be. Marshall's picking off, picking them off there of when to run. And another runner that can pick them up very quickly out of there too now with Truella out there. Sherlock. Last tackle against the Roosters. Vorton one side, McGowan the other. Vorton gets cut out. Tassel's got it. He hears the call from the referee. Puts up the midfield bomb. Deacon flying off the back of his shoulder. Nearly fell into the arms of Tassel. Hand over to St George. Mark Coyne with a scurry. 70 tackles the Roosters have had at 65 the Saints. It has gone from one end to the other. Hodges to Elliott. The Saints continue to work their forwards off the half and 5-8. Collins. Well, what that does do is give you a bit of width which moves the opposition defence around and that can be very tiring to play against. Hodges decides to take this opportunity to kick. Picked his mark and he nearly picked it out beautifully. Only missed by a couple of metres. And this is as good as a mile here, and, you know, the ideal result would have been to land it in goal and pull it up, but that didn't happen, and now East get the restart from the quarter. Osborne shows his strength against George Arliff. It's 8-4 to the Saints. Horton, Truella. Truella, a dangerous pass, and George knocked it on. Lucky for the Roosters. Only a couple of minutes away from half time. And it's East who have been fighting to get back into it. Nilly threw it away. Tassel. McGarn was looking for somebody. Now he finds Salvatore. Salvatore back to McGarn. McGarn floating it out. Beautiful ball to Deacon. Deacon in full stride. Walford's got him from behind though. This would be a coach's nightmare, but it's entertaining to watch. Up we go to the other flank. <laughs> Orford. Grabbed and thrown over. No, I was going to say they were going to drag him over the sideline. Truella head down. He will send it to the last for the Roosters. 
again. They were searching down a blind with Marshall. Now Sherlock, they keep on trying to find this overlap on Walker's wing. Deacon, back to McGann. McGann out to Prothero. Prothero's going to kick. It was a fairly hopeful one to try and keep that alive in the end goal. It wasn't a concern at all for the Saints. Back to the 22. Just a couple of minutes to go before half time, and St George working the ball out from their own quarter after this tap. You'd normally expect they'd play for half time and be happy to go in at eight four, but the way this again, this game's going, they'll try to open it up yet again. Hardy across the right to Gourlay. There has been plenty of variation in both sides. Play with the ball, Elliot. Bended strongly by Tassel. Osborne. Collins with the kick. Now the chase is there to follow. Beatty's down there. I'm tired watching them. Terry Hill. And they're struggling to get back some of the East forwards right near the break for half time. And only 60 seconds remaining. And it's 8 4 to St. George. Horton calling for the switch. Good short ball inside for Brendan Hall. He loses it. So they're going to give St. George a final say before half time. And they might even try for a field goal. If they're looking at the clock, they've got about 40 seconds. Oh, even better, a shot for goal. It'll be Jeff Orford. He had his hands in the air, but it wasn't his hands that Annesley was concerned about. It was his feet and his presence still amongst the play of the ball. Now, did he trap himself? Was it St. George milking a bit of a penalty here? I think he had time to get out of there. This match tonight, and this and Friday night, to continue their drive to the semi finals. Walford won't be able to add any more before half time. But a bright and breezy first 40 minutes. Play has flowed from one end to the other. Plenty of excitement in this vital match that has a big bearing on the top five. Eight points to four. We're back after this. Welcome viewers throughout the United Kingdom, Europe and New Zealand. Welcome aboard on 10 Sports Action. This, this end Friday nighter. And a vital one as far as the semi-finals are concerned. As both these sides have been making a charge towards the top five. Well, no matter where you are, you'd be enjoying this. The standard of football is, is terrific. The entertainment value, I think it's admirable, the fact that both sides are looking to move the ball. The coaches would probably want to minimise the error rates a little bit, but you've got to enjoy what you're seeing. Well worth the ticket. Well worth the price of admission at the Sydney Football Stadium this evening. Huey McGann stands his ground, 32 out. Sherlock with the kick from dummy half. Potter chases this ball everywhere. It gets bouncing from left to right, then a step to beat the first man. Elliot. Seven handling errors against the Saints. The Roosters just behind. But of those five they made, four were on the first tackle. Osborne. Osborne to the skipper, Beatty. Taken by his opposite, Terry Hill. And a good duel out amongst the centres. The old and the young. And as it has, Bill amongst the, uh, the wingers too. Prothero. It's a chance to show his wares tonight against Ricky Walford. And Jeff Walford against that man, Martin Afire. Afire's leading the way so far tonight, getting a try out wide for St. George. Tassel bringing it up for the Roosters. My apologies about... The earlier matches this evening, especially to you St. George fans, your reserve grade with the victors 20 to 10 over Eastern Suburbs this evening. Unfortunately, the bad news hasn't changed for the President's Cup. 24 to 14 to the Roosters. And a couple of injury problems uh, that surfaced or were confirmed at halftime, Graham, uh, for Eastern Suburbs. Dennis Beecraft won't be back on the field. He has torn ankle ligaments, and Guy Pickin has a torn bicep muscle, and he won't be back for the Dragons either. And you're battling with the flu. 
Yeah, down on the sideline doesn't help either in the cold. <laughs> Look after yourself. You've got to go the distance with a big one on Sunday, Brisbane and Penrith. A great clash up at Lang Park. Looking forward to it. And the Broncos, of course, with so many players as Penrith have, in line for test selection against New Zealand. Very much the front page story of Big League this week on Sound of All News Agents and around the grounds in round 13 of the Winfield Cup. Scott Goulet getting wide and nearly getting out of the tackle to break the line. And the Saints take the shortcut to the 22 and settle for a scrum. Only the five scrums, and the Roosters have those by one. Salvatore he sends the Saints backwards. Borton rushing up was Collins. Borton with the ball out wide. He knew that somebody was out of the line. Somebody broke that line, and he's had a chance out wide with a one-hander from Terry Hill. It was a sloppy ball and well and truly forward. Borton took the gamble out wide, and then Hill just floated this one a mile forward to George Arliss, who got hammered under the rib cage by Osborne. Yeah, he, George Arliss was put under a lot of pressure there. He's just come back from injury, and he didn't appreciate that. Well, he's still down with the trainer, too. Yeah, Eastern Suburbs' game this year has been built around uh, basic mis mistake-free football, and they've deviated from that pattern tonight, and, it's, and they're really paying the price for it. The Saints coming back through Brittle. Only the four points in it. But enough advantage for St George if they can add another try to make it real dangerous. Walford's on the inside of Coyne. He goes out to a fire. Was he behind him? Yes, says Annesley. He's a freak. Martin the fire was one side. Ricky Walford the other. Take your pick. Peter Coyne said, I'll stay with this freak from Witness. All the way from England. But give a rap to this man, Peter Coyne. All the skills, a dummy, a jinking run through. He's looking out wide, the kick. George Arliss was recovering from injury out on the wing. A fire just left him in his way. Walford. Waved away. A little bit of a breather there for Reese as he misses that one, but they are still eight points away, 12-4. Friddle. To Collins. One win away from the top five, both these sides. Hardy, shaped to, sh uh, to throw a short ball to Coyne. Now Peter Coyne with the kick to the end goal. It's gonna stay in there. Fires there on George Arles, misses him. I think we can forget him for one mistake. I don't think I'd care how many he misses Bell as long as he keeps scoring tries. Yeah, I'd heard about he does this wrong and he does that wrong, but anyone that puts the ball over the try line as often as he's do he does is worth his weight in goal. Or pure big dollars. Right on their own 22, the Roosters. Salvatore. East needing to get something started. Walford under this one. He draws Truella. Gets it away. Kept alive. Back to Walford. It's all St. George since half time. Skipper Beattie in trouble though. Collins. Back to the wing where Walford has just disappeared in field. So Beattie looking as though he might have ankle problems. Hodges. Ball was a line ball to Priddle. Potter! Potter to George Arles! Walford! The pass was forward. Annesley's got that one. The ball was lost anyway. Another opportunity lost. Potter was trying to do George Arles by himself. Then he heard the call. Much too late. It was forward. 14,500 fans here. Deacon. 
28 tackles apiece in the opposition half. St. George have done the most with it. Deacon. How long would it be since you've seen the four wingers in a game of rugby league handle the ball this much? No one's complaining from tonight at all. But to the credit of players like Walford, so often they creep up, pop up in midfield. Yeah, they've, they've gone looking for it, but they've been where they were needed. Sherlock. Charge down! Priddle didn't know where it was. Now he does, and he's off. Great tackle. What a great save from East. But they are under enormous pressure. Pressure that's not going to Try. end up. It is. Off the foot of Gourlay, they still get it. Now, Annesley was sharp there to call it. Turf, who's only just gone out there for St George on the Nissan replay, getting it away, fumbling, kicked through, or did it touch a finger? Now, just watch as he, he realises the ball down around his ankles. He kicks. Now, just keep an eye on his right hand. Did it come off an East player? Yep. Good call from Annesley. You've got to hand it to the referee for a difficult one that gives the smiles to Gourlay. Plan move, he reckons. Wal Walford adds another two. He's in trouble at home in a big way. It is 18-4. to The Roosters. This will make it 18 completed tackles. If they go to the last one, the score is 18-4. The Roosters calling out for a try. Desperate for one. Truella. The penalty will come for East right in front of the post. And East would be very happy, uh, St George would be very happy here for East to have a kick for goal. McGann tells Salvatore to push it back out to the sideline. Yeah, good option here by East. I'm sure that St George would have given that penalty away. In fact, hoping that East were going to take the kick for goal. That would have given him some respite. Salvatore will put it only three metres away. Now Brendan Hall has taken it back 12 metres out. McGann to Georgialis. They haven't been finding a way through, especially the back line. They continue to try and do the trick through the forwards. Salvatore, now knocked down by the Saints. Six more tackles. Borton quickly. Brendan Hall hammered good defence. This is a mammoth defensive effort. Great game of football here at the stadium. Borton. At the end of this one, it'll be up around 20 tackles. Will they hang on, Tassel? Now Marshall looking wide. Sherlock with a switch to Salvatore. They've been turning it back up the middle. St. George have been handling all that. Marshall, last tackle. Bombs away. McGann was trying to get there. But a great climb from St. George through Potter. There must be some tired St. George defenders out there. Bill, do you agree that they just haven't worked it properly out wide, the Roosters? Well, I, I still believe that Brendan Hall's the man. I think he's got to run more. I think he's got to go to the defensive line. He's got to put them under pressure and, and try and take them on on his own. At the moment, it's just a safe matter of catching and passing. Maybe he's carrying an injury, but what he does best, he's not doing at the moment, and that is doing things on his own. Another penalty against the Saints. Salvatore. Well, they've just had 20 tackles down this end. They've soaked some up. Now they've got six more. It is normally the pressure just builds enough to force the crack. 47 tackles in the opposition half for the Roosters. 29 only for St. George Marshall, nearly snuck it. Hall, keeping it alive now, George Ellis. They are lifting themselves, the Saints. So are Eastern Suburbs, Salvatore. He crashes over. The statistics had to tell. 
something had to break. The Saints couldn't send it to 26 straight tackles. Bogged down on their own line, the Nissan replay, too big, too strong, and just too much possession. Weight of possession, something had to give, and it was Craig Salvatore here running it too big backs, but he's a big man, a front rower, and he was able to break free and force it down. And the Roosters kept hammering away at the rucks. They've been pounding away in this area, looking for a crack, and it took Craig at Salvatore, who's obviously looking to give the national selectors a reminder that he can, he can lift himself for the big ones, and he certainly has again tonight. Can Sherlock even get them back further? Still only midway through this half, coming around but too far. St George still with a handy lead. It is 18 points to eight. A tired looking St George side coming back for this restart. The problem is when you when you have to withstand so much pressure from the opposition in defence in your own quarter, that when you do finally get the ball back and you kick it and you chase it, you can't give a good chase, you can't pin them down, they very quickly get the ball back to where they started. And St George are going to have to make sure that that doesn't happen. I think if I was Brian Smith, I'd be looking at making a couple of more timely changes. Glassell. Elliot misses him. Paul Danes, and 22 is on for St George. Makes the tackle low on Borton. One of the problems, Graham, that Eastern Suburbs have found, had in the second half is their clearing kicks. They've, uh, they've struggled to get out of their own territory through poor clearing kicks. We'll see, see if they've learned from the earlier mishaps. Marshall upended by Hardy. Sherlock just getting the kick in, touched in fact. Couldn't fall for the Roosters though it fell easily for Hodges. Mark Coyne. Pretty even the kicks in play. Long last St. St. George, we get a chance to play with the ball. But they make a mistake, they give it back to Ace. Not a good ball from Osborne. No, not smart play. Now, Sherlock to Brendan Hall. The Roosters to McGann. Intercept. Rex Turp comes up with the one they need. Now Mark Coyne gets away. Turp is on the inside again. Just when East looked as though they were building. It's St. George, Hodges, the smell of a try for the Saints. Elliott will support plenty of it. Goulet will get his second. It's a big effort from the Saints. They got the intercept. And quickly they turned it into a try through Goulet. Always plenty of support on the Nissan replay. East just couldn't get back there quick enough in big enough numbers. Inside to Elliott, then inside again to Goulet. No one was going to stop the big man that close. St George do do things very quickly. It was Troy Hodges that made the initial break after Turp's intercept, and then he got back to take the ball. One off the ruck there. They fired it out wide. Elliott made a break, got a pass back inside, and Scott Goulet, who's got plenty of class, caps it off. Ricky Walford. Looking to add to his tally. Three from five. He's stunned. After having possession up at the other end. No goal from Walford. But it is 22 points to eight. St. George over East. It's 22 points to eight. St. George over East. And the Saints with their eyes very much on the top five. Fine performance from them. Mistakes have been costly for Eastern Suburbs, but they have had their opportunities to make sure that this scoreline should have been or could have been a lot closer. Well, they haven't finished off as well as St George, but when you look at the composition of the St George team, they've won three out of their last four. If they can get away with this one, four out of five. And it's when they've brought the youngsters into the side. Hodges at half, Coyne's gone into 5-8, and of course the arrival of Offia with those two guys in the middle with a good passing game. His arrival on the flank has given them so much pace out wide that they can score from anywhere. Danes taken by Borton. Elliott. 
Last tackle as the Saints get back to halfway. Peter Coyne Just made sure that Potter had a little bit more time than he to get the kick in. Country Rugby League fans, the Northern Rivers TV Super League Series, of course, travels to Queen Elizabeth Park Casino tomorrow night. A vital one between Northern Rivers Group 1 and Mid-North Coast. 7.30 p.m. to kick off up there. The Roosters. Still with a lot of time on their hands, but they need to score a lot of points. Brendan Hall, little chip, easily covered by Goulet. They showed their hand too quickly on that one. Well, Goulet's maturing. He's always had plenty of potential, but never fulfilled it since he, he came across last year from Rugby Union. But now he's showing maturity. He's showing a bit of confidence in himself, and he's starting to look like a league player rather than a Rugby Union player playing league. Mark Coyne has been a fine player for the Saints. Now he's looking for a fine make it a hat trick that is rubbing soul into the wound you think he hasn't enjoyed this against his old club eastern suburbs that's what hurt most he gets three mark coin made the bust a great step he left salvatore in no man's land the nissan replay as soon as he broke the line he knew who was coming not just coin though, so did East. So did 14 and a half thousand fans here at the stadium. He made it a hat trick. And what a performance tonight. Walford adds the extras. What a great wing pair they are. It is 28 points to eight. Interesting comment from a fire when he first joined St. George. According to the press, he said, just tell my teammates to make sure I see plenty of the ball. It hasn't taken them long to realise about his match-winning performances. But the first couple of weeks he was here, some of the questions did start to surface again, didn't they? You know, whether he had it and some of his games weren't quite of the quality of this one. But now that he's found his feet, there's no stopping him. They should never have surfaced, though. Billy's done it enough in international football. Well, I suppose the next question is, is international football as hard as this? All you have to do is read about his try score, try scoring efforts. If you put the ball out of the line as much as him, you've got to have something. Now, St. George, relax a little. East coming back. Collins gets there to pick up a loose pass. That is what we were talking about before. The finish of the Roosters, not the same as St. George. It hasn't been there. This was another chance, and I would imagine that if it was St. George bringing the ball down here, that a winger would have bobbed up in the centre of that and scored for them. But Wayne Collins tidies up for the Saints. 28 points to eight. The Saints are marching in here at the Sydney Football Stadium. Paul Danes. A kick down from Peter Coyne. Thirteen handling errors against the Saints. I suppose you're going to make some when you're trying things. I don't think it's a, a stat that too many coaches would look at. Would they build with a small one like that? Wouldn't be at all worried. You, you don't often get to feel comfortable in a game, but Brian Smith would be right now. There was a mile of promise in this eastern suburb side. Now it's going to be difficult to come from the pack again. Over the next few weeks. But it is still a very bunch Winfield Cup. And they are not dead by a long shot. Salvatore just trying anything here. Off Osborne over the sideline. The Eastern Suburbs to feed and get six more. Brendan Hall. Not the sort of pass that Provo was looking for. In fact, it's offered. 
on that right wing. Short ball. And Orford had two men sweating on him. Even though St George have done some great things in attack, the ball movement, the support play has all been superb. One of the most impressive things from a coaching point of view will be their defensive line. They've stuck together, they've scrambled when they've had there, they've had to, they've lined, their lines continue to move up and they've hit hard in tight. A very impressive defensive effort as well. And that's particularly so, Bill, when you consider that Eastern Suburbs tried to take on St George through the, through the uh, forwards early on and the forward defence of St George was outstanding. 7-4, the penalties to the Roosters as well. Make it 8-4. Now, 10 minutes, is it? 10 minutes in the bend. Down to 12 men. McGann, quick hands. Burke. Stepping, gets it to Marshall. And they get a try as we go down to the last five minutes. Right under the black dot. The Roosters going up against 12 in this movement, but it was quick hands. All the same on the Nissan replay. McGann knew that it had to get out there. Matt Burke, his first touch. And he gets it back on the inside to Marshall to scoot over right underneath the black dot. Sherlock wastes no time. And that scoreline goes away from 28 points to 14. Pretty hard to stay grim in defence when it's not necessary. I think St George have just about closed up shop. Uh, they were minus a man and Eastern Suburbs get a consolation try. But St George would be very happy with their efforts here. I think they came here with a lot to prove and whether they were semi-final contenders or not was going to depend on the outcome of this one. Ball being showed by Salvatore. No 5-8 for the Saints with Coyne in the bin. Trying everything, the Roosters. Hodges is back there. Where's Martin? And the Saints still keep it alive. Potter heads back out towards a fire's wing. About three minutes remaining. Mark Hafire has excited everyone enough tonight. The Saints will promise more next Friday night on Mission Friday Night Football when we travel to Adelaide. And the Adelaide Oval, and in South Australia, the quickest thing they've been used to has been the likes of Lily Thompson. Now they might see somebody just as quick, except with a ball in his hands. Walford will waste as much time as possible for St George. Just look for two more points. Four from seven for Walford. This match has been high on entertainment. And the vast majority of it provided by St George this evening. You don't think their supporters haven't enjoyed themselves? Raven, well, last week after the, uh, the big win over Newcastle, the Saints... Uh, the there were $100,000 in bets went on with one book, bookmaker in Brisbane. I wonder how many dollars will be placed this week. The thing vast amounts now. Waved away. Stays the same, 28 points to 14. And Walford was looking for that goal to make it 100 points for him for this season. He might get another chance. Cripps as he comes to the eastern suburbs defence. Collins. Danes. Getting it away now, pushed out of dummy half. Now he stays there. Priddle plays it back. Inside the last 60 seconds. Slowest play the balls of the evening. Might compare with this one. <laughs> They're not going to do any more than they have to. You can't blame them. 
Hodges kicking in behind the line. Bouncing to the in goal. Orford. Taken by a fire. Time is just about gone. And this vital one will go to the Saints. In a most impressive fashion. Hill. The overlap for the Roosters. Matt Burke. Puts the foot on the accelerator. Gets to his feet quickly. That's all there is. He got to his feet quickly, but it wasn't enough. And St George travel away to the Sydney Football Stadium. Martin Afire gets a hat-trick from them. Three to a fire, a double to Goulet, Walford four goals, Hill, Salvatore, Marshall, try scorers for the Roosters, one, go one goal to Sherlock, 28 points to four.